Good morning, welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I have something spectacular to show you all. Check this out, the birds have started laying. That one, that one's songs. Um, she's the only Americana, so we're, we know that one's hers. Get in losers, we're making Dutch babies today. <laughs> So we'll use some of these beautiful eggs. Come on along, let's make breakfast. But we're gonna make a Dutch baby, which is a lovely fluffy pancake that you start on the stove and you finish in the oven. And we've got all our stuff here. So I don't know about you, but I am dying to crack into these eggs. All right, cool. All right, so we need a little bit more than a half a cup. I've got my measure here. We're gonna crack them into here in case anything's weird. Um, and then pour them into here to measure. Let's do it. Cool. So we've got our half a cup plus two tablespoons of eggs. Out of those tiny eggs, it took five of them to make up three large eggs worth. So I'm really excited about this. Yeah. So we're gonna get this into the blender with half a cup of flour, a tablespoon of sugar, and a half a cup of milk. Let's get blendy. So question for you, is it better to layer when you're blending things? Is it better to put the liquid stuff in first or does it not matter the order? Yeah, it probably makes more sense to put the liquid in at the bottom just cause that's where the blades are. So, makes sense. so that way it doesn't get gunked up, I guess, with the other stuff on, the, on top of it before. Yeah, I hadn't really thought about that. That's super interesting. Okay. Makes you think. Everything's got a thing. That is true. Those are our bird's eggs. How cool is this? So I'm gonna pulse this for a moment and then I'm gonna blend it. Here we go. Okay, and... Let me just scrape that down. Okay, that's it. That's really all that's going on here. So I have the oven preheated to 425 and we're gonna get our pan ready and finish this up. Make sure that you're using a pan that can go into the oven. That's why I'm using the cast iron today. I'm gonna melt into the cast iron pan about a half a cup, well not about, precisely a half a cup of butter. I am using unsalted for this. And we're gonna let that melt down. Our butter is nice and foamy. And I'm going to pour our business right into here. and we're gonna cook this just for a moment. So let me get you in just a little bit closer. You can see the edges are starting to lift a little bit, which is just what we want. So we're gonna pop the whole thing right into the oven now, pan and all, right on in. It's at 425 degrees, and we're gonna let that go for 20 minutes.
Okay, she's in. So we will be back in 20 minutes. We're gonna turn down the heat at that point and let it go another five minutes. Ooh-wee, look at that puffy business. So we're gonna turn down the heat to 350 and give it five more minutes. All right, let's get it out of the oven. Come look. That, my fine friends, that is a Dutch baby. So voila, 15 minutes and then 25 in the oven and we have breakfast. So we're gonna enjoy that before we do a bunch of other stuff that's gotta get done today. Do homemade syrup. Mm. That's the syrup from February. Nice. From March? Oh, when did we make syrup? March. Okay. March, yeah. So we're out here with Cookie. Thank goodness we're not in my guest room and she's doing so much better. Say hello. Say hello. You can see the tip of her beak is almost all grown back. And we're doing a little socializing today. She's out running around with the rest of the, the bunch and she's been doing okay. Um, we've got a squirt gun employed if anybody, if anybody tries to pick on her. Um, the next step to getting her out of the guest room is to have a space of her own in the coop. So Bill right now is building us a door to separate the coop into two spaces and then we'll move her crate down so she's got a place to sleep at night too. And uh, hopefully, little by little, where they'll be able to see each other and interact with the uh, door in the way, um, we can get this flock back together. So we built a door that spans the width of the coop to kind of separate Cookie from the, the rest of the, the brood, but that still allows them to see each other. So it's just, it's chicken wire in a wood frame and we've got some hinges on it. So we're gonna screw it in place and then we can keep them separated. And when we wanna bring them together, we just open the door and let them socialize. So let's get that put in and see how it works. Okay, so thing one is done. Cookie is in her end of the coop. The other five birds are in their end of the coop. So the last little bit of getting Cookie outdoors and back into the flock 
is a place for her to sleep at night because the way the coop is situated, there's no nest box for her on this end. So we've brought out her crate from upstairs when she was a guest in our guest room. Bill is wrapping it in chicken wire so that it's secure from predators. And then we'll put a tarp on top so she's got a place to be in the dark at night. Tonight is going to be the first night that she's back out with her flock. So think good thoughts, think good thoughts. I made a cookie box. We took the kennel that Cookie was staying in upstairs, wrapped it in chicken wire to keep pests out and critters out, and then covered it in part of a tarp so she would have a dark, quiet place to sleep at night. And we bungee corded it to the coop so she can come in and out as she pleases. So we did it. We got Cookie back in the coop. <laughs> we'll have to see how tonight goes. We're all thinking good thoughts. Um, in the meanwhile, got some onions out of the garden and we're gonna go make some dinner, grill some burgers, put some onions on it <laughs> and uh, enjoy ourselves. So thank you so much for hanging out with us for breakfast and this build and we will catch you up soon. Take care.